Well, uh, welcome to St George's and this lovely seal here. Um, we've got a really um, interesting programme to the, this, uh, this evening and I'm really pleased to uh, welcome a number of uh, my colleagues from other institutes and I'll introduce you to them. This actually is the go. only World Rugby Day going, event going on in the UK, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, you should know that uh, World Rugby Day is a global event. It's uh, organised by this um, NGO called the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, and they've been doing an annual event every year for 2007. So simply by being here, you are part of a much bigger event, and there are similar things going on in the, all, uh, all around the world, which is uh, exciting. Um, so there's free roaming dogs. The dogs are all in these townships that we're owned, but they're free roaming. So unlike the UK, where people tend to keep their dogs behind fences, the dogs do belong to people, and people do care about them but they just let them roam freely. Um, and you can see the conditions. There's no um, water supply to the, to the to the households. Um, if people want water, they have to take a wheelbarrow to the end of the road um, and fill up um, buckets from the tap at the end of the road. There's no um, sewage um, in, in these places. Um, currently, in Thailand, rabies is still a public health problem, especially in, more rural, in, in the rural areas in the country up north or in the northeastern part of the country, for example. And according to the World Health Organization, the number of people exposed to animal bites varies from th th sorry, 300 to 400,000 a year. And it's estimated that 17 to 25,000 patients need application of rabies vaccination. It is said that the three main reasons for human rabies death in Thailand are unvaccinated dogs, ignorance of the dangers of dog bite wounds, misinformation or myth about rabies, such as believe that rabies occurs only in summer or that it can be transmitted only from dogs. We know that this is like, you know, it is a problem. It is like something that we grow up, we know, we learn about rabies in Thailand when we were in school. Uh, if you ask Thai people about, um, but we call it hydrophobia or mad dog disease, you know, like I think pe Thai people kind of like know this, everybody know it. Then we learn in Thailand that in school we learn like uh, how to not tease a dog, you know, like street dog, like if they have, they have a chance to have rabies, you know, we know, we know taste that, okay, if the dog has like jaw drop or tail drop or excess of saliva um, or change in behavior, you know, like uh, uh, Chinese or aggressive, then we need to be aware and be like stay away from that dog. So as I said, our roles and responsibilities uh, predominantly involve surveillance and in the first case, suspect cases. Sadly, we get quite a lot of human cases coming through from the hospitals around the country uh, where somebody's come into a hospital with a neurological um, disease of some form and they want to try and rule out rabies with antimortal diagnosis. Um, so we do, get, we do end up, when these people do go on to sadly die from rabies, we do end up with post-mortem materials and it's not particularly pleasant. We also have the deaths in quarantine from quarantined animals coming from um, countries that are not within the pet scheme. <coughs> on top of uh, that sort of surveillance aspect, um, we also do surveillance of bat species, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. And the area that I'm more interested in is the research and development because I'm a predominantly a research scientist. So I've used up all my uh, one-liners about rabies, really. Um, the key thing is, I mean, Julie's already shown this, but the key thing here to think is that rabies really is the only disease on the planet that once clinical disease has kicked in, clinical signs are open, it's 100% fatal, with very, very few cases where that isn't the situation other than through the induction um, of therapy. So we work that we're doing here at St George's and trying to develop treatments for rabies, and in particular using um, plants and with uh, done this for um, this approach, take, undertaken this approach for uh, two antibodies which neutralize uh, rabies virus and um, we've shown that these antibodies uh, bind to the rabies virus and they protect against disease in experimental animals. Uh, furthermore, uh, using plants, this means that we can uh, produce these antibodies at very large scale and as a result um, this material that we produce, these antibodies that we produce, uh, can be made at a low cost uh, and as an alternative to human rig and equine rig. And just to um, summarise, um, we feel that this technology uh, offers rabies treatment solutions for the poor in developing countries, uh, those who are most uh, who are at greatest risk of rabies.